The internet will forever be a frontier for exploration, and if you're a music lover who's always craving something new, weird, and exciting, I can promise you that discovery is always just a click away. If you manage to find yourself in the right places, of course. Today, I want to help take you there. I want you and I to get lost in the deepest corners of the music world and explore nine strange and unsettling albums waiting for you on the internet. From 90 minute long dark and ominous masterclasses in sonic exploration to detuned and unhinged soundscapes that bend the conventional expectations of strings and vocals, to even an album that replicates being a bystander at an arcade zoning out and waiting patiently for your turn. Yeah, we got a, a whole bunch of weird material to explore today. If this is your first time here at the channel and you love exploring fascinating music, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn all notifications on. I love, love, love doing deep dives into obscure or seemingly lost genres, artists, and albums, and I hope to have you here for our next adventure. And really quick, before we get into this, I just want to say thank you so much. We just hit 100,000 subscribers here at the channel. Um, Mind-blowing. I, I can't believe it. Just seeing six digits in my subscriber count is so weird. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for all the support over the years and watching my videos and just sharing music with me as well. I've, I've learned of so many different just sounds. Uh, over these past couple of years doing Pat Chennington and uh, I don't know what I would do without this channel. So thank you all for the support and cheers to many more adventures in music. I got a lot of things planned for the channel in the future. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into today's video, nine strange and unsettling albums waiting for you on the internet. Let's do this. Don't judge a book by its cover, a phrase I'm sure we have all heard far too many times, and who doesn't love a nice little surprise that contrasts what we thought before we opened the door? As human beings, we live for a good shock, and more specifically, I think we're naturally drawn to the pairing of two things that have nothing to do with one another. It's odd, unsettling, and eager to prey on your curiosity. Enter Disease's 2020 release of Loving Relationship, and let me ask you, what do you expect an album that looks like this to sound like? Well, if you've hung out here on this channel before, you probably would assume we're going to be hit with some like crushingly barren drone or screeching noise music, depressive vaporwave tones, or perhaps maybe some overblown and distorted post-apocalyptic techno beats or something. Well, no, none of that actually. Because Loving Relationship is one of the most calming, therapeutic, and smooth selection of tracks you can find on the internet. On a surface level, what looks like the aftermath of death itself, gazing over its final purge of life before descending back into some sort of unfathomable void or something, is nothing but a collection of tracks that sound like this diner from the 1940s, a classic scene coding a highly regarded detective in black and white as they ponder their next move in the current case they're working on. Loving Relationship sounds nothing like the artwork would imply. The album varies between breezy, romantic jazz samples to ambient and slush-wavy gardens of sound. It seems to flip-flop between these two styles for most of the album from song to song, and it kind of just puts me in the mind of this detective that I picture when listening to this album, daydreaming as they sip their coffee in the dead of night, the only customer in the entire restaurant. This glaring contradiction between the sinister mood of the artwork and the sounds that actually lie within is incredibly interesting, and its draw makes you just want to investigate everything a bit further. But just like the cover of that book which shouldn't be judged, don't be shocked when you find this to be a complete bubble bath of relaxing, simulation video game-esque background music. It's a little needle in the haystack you can find in the catalog of Geometric Lullaby. Take a step with death itself into a world of weird relaxation. I think you'll enjoy your stay a little bit.
Something I love about Bandcamp is finding a page or artist and feel as if I've stumbled upon their personal diary. There is so much music being uploaded all the time and I really like how Bandcamp's massive frontier can allow someone to just upload a release or a set of releases and hide behind all of the noise and other front page stuff the site has to offer. One page I've stumbled across in particular that really makes me feel like I'm entering the mind of the creator and feeling whatever they felt as they've uploaded their music is this page right here. Stated to be from Hell, Michigan, scrolling through Nullabyte's music page enters us into a dark room for processing photos, an entire discography glazed in all red. Each release is contorted, glitched, and broken. Almost everything takes you to a single track, but one release on that page that popped out for me was in an attempt to purge. Not really sure what I'm looking at here in the artwork, but uh, this is one of those things that you just have to click and see what it's all about. The release was created to outline the phases of the depression the artist was feeling over the course of a month. And looking into this right away, I'm immediately reminded of Madion's secret EP, Celine. Besides the all red and black artwork, both projects explore difficult emotions thrown up into audio form. You can't help but notice how much energy, whether positive or negative, can inspire a really creative release. At just over 20 minutes, this four track EP contains a really nice blend of styles and sounds. Track 1, Skipping Disc, is exactly what it states to be, perfect for fans of glitchy chops, eerily pitched vocals, and then we get into track 2, An Illusion of Clarity, which tones it down a bit, gets a bit more tranquil with these soothing, gentle, buzz, and jungle-esque ambient flows. All going into the next track, Intermission, flips the switch again and delivers us some high-energy drum and bass, which all crashes down into that final song, which is also titled Final Song that brings us to a boss level from hell. In an attempt to purge is an action-packed journey for those seeking a really fun 20-minute audio snack. Each track comes with a written description on the Bandcamp page, which I highly recommend checking out. Like I said earlier, I love when artists on Bandcamp use the platform as a sort of audio diary or journal to throw their feelings onto, and this release was definitely that for Nullabyte. The one, the only, Telepath. 2015's Wait For You under his alias Virtual Dream Plaza is another one of those super long signature Telepath tracks that stretch out the original sample material in such a majestic way, forcing every muscle in your body to relax, stress just magically melting away by the minute, and transporting your entire soul into a random place in nature for a solid 30 minutes or so, and I think we all need a break like that every once in a while. Shrieking cries of a bird, splashy drums, and unbelievably floaty synths are just some of the many sounds that accompany this half an hour long audio daydream. Something I love about Telepath tracks, and I'm sure you've experienced this before if you've ever sat through one of his pieces similar to Wait For You, is that you can't tell if the songs feel super long or super short. Yes, there is a set in stone length for what you are listening to, obviously, but that outer body experience delivered with every quest into Telepath dictates time in such a way that makes the whole experience seem unmeasurable. I think Telepath tracks bring to life what it would feel like to be a fox, or an eagle, a bear, or for that matter, any other animal besides a human being. We are the only species on this planet that time actually exists for. It's an interesting concept when you think about it. We've all just agreed to measure the concept of living in general. Making meetings on time, not being late for a date, calling something one or two o'clock, or working overtime. Just so much stress is caused from the faith we've put into this thing called time. But tracks like Wait For You give us a glimpse into a dimension where time was never measured. We're only here to exist. And in classic telepath album artwork fashion, we got just a blurry VHS fuzzy picture of some sort of Japanese television broadcast or movie, not really sure. Uh, but I just, I kind of love this picture. It really goes well with the music that is in this thing. Uh, and it just really seems like this person that we're looking at was just transported 
into this random spot in nature. Just completely shocked at how that happened physically and uh, adjusting to what her next move would be. One of the best childhood memories I have growing up in New Jersey was going down to the Jersey Shore during the summer and just being amazed at all of the lights and colors of what seemed to be at the time these gigantic arcades that just plastered the entire boardwalk. Flashing lights, bright colors, and a billion and a half crane games you ain't ever gonna win. Nana Shrine's Fun Station brings me right back to those days with this super weird but full of character 18 track release. Nano Shrine piles on old arcade sound effects and video game vocal samples to give off as the Bandcamp page for this album states, the feeling of being a bystander at the arcade zoning out and waiting patiently for your turn. Vaporwave albums like this are so simple and fun and I love discovering them like late at night venturing down the rabbit hole of releases you can find when clicking a genre or a tag on Bandcamp. Using a heavy dosage of reverb makes the arcade Nano Shrine brings to us feel almost odd. You don't really hear people or footsteps, which I find are very common sound elements. Many releases like this contain to give off a grand or populated setting, but hearing nothing but arcade machines rambling on and on and on guarantees you're one of the only people in this video game haven. With a track list titled as loud and obnoxious as some of these migraine inducing sound effects can be, Fun Station reminds me of an album I discussed in a previous video on this channel, Casino Master's Bonus Spin Good Luck. Both are jam packed with sounds bringing you to a setting usually filled with people but everything feels barren due to the lack of an audience. Enter a world full of demo screens begging for your 25 cents, driving games dying for you to press start, and indoor rides and animatronics that are either in need of repair or just really dusty. As colorful as all these sounds are, there is this undeniable feeling of loneliness at the fun station. You gotta check it out for yourself. Before we continue, I just wanted to let y'all know really quick that I've recently released some brand new official merch. The shirts are in the merch bar below. If you're interested in scooping one of them up before they're gone, they will only be available for a limited time only. So if you dig it, pick one up now. They come in a couple different colors. It's super fresh and helps support the channel a whole bunch. Nostalgia transmitted through the air. Skywave ZP is a signal wave project from Ethereal Media released back in September of 2020. For those who do not know, signal wave is a sound or subgenre branching out from vaporwave that explores distant memories on old televisions, radio broadcasts, or similar mediums. These audio collages stitching together these television commercials, waiting music, and advertisements. It, Sounds pretty congested, but when it's done right, the sound style can deliver a really nice narrative in a super moving way. I've done an entire video on Signal Wave a couple years back. It's a little corner of music I still find so fascinating to this day, and if you want to learn a little bit more about it, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. With a lonely radio tower on an either early morning or dying afternoon sky, can't really tell here, but the Skywave EP is what would be playing on your half-broken radio in the abandoned car you found on a highway in some post-apocalyptic timeline. You are the only person left, or that's at least from what you can tell, and you know the only thing left to do is just drive and see whatever or whoever you may find. These songs seem sort of haunted in a way, generally blissful and melancholy piano tunes that just seep out of this crunchy radio. They're so brittle and would crumble at the slightest touch, so be really delicate with these four tracks. Wherever your destination may be, use these little songs to keep your spirits up, because you're going to need it for whatever lies ahead. Yeah. 
let's keep this signal wave train going a little bit more. I want to take a look at Weather Death's 2019 release of Wake Me Up From This Sleep. This super short collection of like bite-sized tracks, which all lead up to the final track, which is longer than all of the previous tracks combined, is a mysterious hyperactive mess and without a doubt leaves you feeling a bit on edge with its sample choices and flips that have no idea who they are or what they want to be. We have a Japanese weather broadcast with a woman who is either crying or in mid sneeze, I really can't tell here, but that lo-fi VHS and late night television vibe on the artwork is always a welcome for the little nest of a genre the signal wave world has made for itself. Weather Death distorts and batters the samples present in some very exciting ways. Find Wake Me Up From The Sleep on the MTHU Records catalog, and if you find it to be something you like, definitely take a gander at what else they got in store for you over there. Lots of similar material awaits you. Ever since I discovered the ambient experimental New York duo known as Leia and their album Flood Dream, I keep finding myself returning to it over and over again. It's as if I've discovered this like relic sealed away for thousands of years and only opening it now and forever destined to return to it every now and then to like recharge and try to uncover its true power. Engulfed in detuned harps, ancient vocals, and strings that just cry on every note. This release is so powerful with its presence in your ears as it constantly adds more and more scales and just this tragic story told with nothing but plucks and vocals. All of the sounds sit on a bed of this empty black void that allows every sound emitted from the instruments to feel like they're bouncing off a thousand invisible walls. Once the first instrument gets going, it's only a matter of time until every other sound wakes up. Feeling like a soundtrack to a future Ari Aster movie or something, every moment on Flood Dream grows in size and gets more cinematic and notes get weirder and more frightening by the minute. These violins and harps join in on the purging of your senses and whenever you think the album can't get any more intense, it does. In an industry obsessed with precise classification, how do we make sense of the ambiguous shadow Leia casts over the landscape. If you're looking for something different and artistic, give Flood Dreams a try. Their sound and just whole vibe in general reminds me of Pedestrian Deposit, another experimental duo I've actually done an entire video on in the past as well. This exhibition of raw instruments being bent or like contorted into unthinkable positions to create the most wicked of sounds. If you know of anything similar to this type of sound, just please let me know in the comments below. I'm absolutely fascinated with it and would love to discover some more. Something I love to do on sites like Bandcamp, and I highly recommend doing this if you are looking to find something new and obscure, is to just scroll to the bottom of the homepage, click a tag you're interested in, and just begin venturing into past releases and just keep going and going and just see if anything catches your eye. You know, just some artwork or a picture, something that just, you know, hits you in a way. Click that. There are thousands and thousands of musical projects on this site, and many of them become lost in this virtual jungle of releases, which is just a concept I personally love so much because it adds this explorative aspect to the whole thing. It's something I find very fulfilling. Joshua Adam Acosta's Finding was one of those projects I discovered when setting off on one of these band camp expeditions, and I've added it to the collection of albums I use as a brain massage. Sounds weird, but if you check it out, you'll know exactly what I mean. A record containing experiments in closed environments with a recorder, smartphone, and personal computer, Finding is an extremely minimal experimental auditory journey for your ears and mind. Finding is another one of those releases that feel abandoned and completely lost to time due to its barren bandcamp layout and just one supporter as of the making of this video.
One could say the release is very lowercase music-esque, similarities to the sonic qualities present on something like Steve Roden's Forms of Paper, for example, these extremely quiet and faint noises that you eventually forget are even there as they brush your brain with these thousands and thousands of microscopic sized toothbrushes. Finding is a great stress reliever and is beyond just music in a traditional sense to me as it really does just flush your mind out with its field recordings warped in such delicate ways. There is a sort of jump scare though in the album. I'm not going to ruin the fun, so I'll let you uh, find that part out for yourself. If you're interested in finding more material similar to this, one of my favorite places is the Los Angeles-based label known as Line. You'll find a whole bunch of sound art and abstract work on there that can feel so delicate at times. It's a true treat and something different if you're looking to just take a break from whatever else you're listening to or just the world in general. Have fun exploring. Twenty twenty has been a gloomy year for us all. There is no need to explain that. And because of that, I just I find it so ironic that this was the year I stumbled upon the music of English electronic music mastermind James Leland Kirby. It's strange. I'll find albums or tracks I fall in love with from time to time, but I cannot remember the last time I've been truly obsessed within an artist's entire catalog. I have experienced nothing in my life uh, musically as powerful and as moving as the work of Kirby, and We So Tired of All the Darkness in Our Lives has become a piece I have returned to time and time again over these past couple of months. Many will recognize James Leland Kirby as the one behind the infamous Caretaker moniker and his six and a half an hour long epic of everywhere at the end of time. Also, real quick side note, don't worry, the everywhere at the end of time video is coming. I'm working on it, it's gonna be one of the longest videos I've ever done. It's gonna feature a bunch of fellow YouTubers and musicians, just hold a bit longer, I promise you, it will be an incredible watch. With projects like Everywhere at the End of Time and my personal favorite release from James Leland Kirby as the caretaker, An Empty Bliss Beyond This World, his production on We So Tired of All the Darkness in Our Lives skips the Dixieland memories and jolly piano tunes and just gets straight to the void-inducing experimental wonderland of darkness. There really is no progression in these tracks with something like he does on The Caretaker, and I think most people, at least today, cause the internet and just how much that album was talked about on YouTube, they kind of just know him as the caretaker, but there's a lot more to get into with Kirby's works, and this is a great example of it. It's really kind of the same mood throughout the entire piece, and um, it just attaches itself to you like glue. Uploaded on the 28th of September 2017, the track selected for We So Tired of All the Darkness in Our Lives was finalized for release in between Kirby's workload as the caretaker. At this point, Everywhere at the End of Time was well underway, and this album would be a nice little gift from Kirby, a place where we can try some of his different production methods apart from the behemoth he was creating with The Caretaker. Using a variety of distant synths and tired drums that barely, barely make it, Kirby's sound sways between lethargic grays and murky, earthy tones. These are the colors you can't help but picture when listening to a release like this, and whether that is the influence of Ivan Seal's artwork, the artist Kirby uses for a majority of his work, Kirby brings such rich color to what's coming out of your headphones, despite the fact that those colors aren't the most vivid, bright, and jovial. And although there are some slight glimpses of bright moments on here, angelic strings, and certain synths that slowly just breathe out this minty sort of wind, the entirety of the project is cloaked in this enchanting yet tiresome blanket. And like I said earlier, don't go into this expecting some sort of caretaker, you know, it starts off really happy-go-lucky and then it's just like crushing you at the end, uh, kind of thing like that. It's not really like a 0 to 100 sort of thing. We So Tired of All the Darkness in Our Lives is just this slow boat through a dark room on a cloudy, rainy day in a northern port town.
If it's not released now, then this work just sits on a drive for even longer, gathering digital dust which I feel is a shame. Maybe you will find some solace in the sounds if your mood is right or you need them. Maybe one track hits home, maybe more do. Hopefully it can help here and there. I can't recommend Kirby's music enough. If you haven't heard any of his work, please take the time out of your day to give it a listen. There are hours and hours worth of audio to go through on his Bandcamp page. Safe travels, and may the ballroom remain eternal. Are there any other countdown or list style videos you'd want to see explored in the future? Please let me know a topic you'd be interested in seeing me cover in the comments below. If you're interested in supporting the channel as well as getting a bunch of exclusive rewards and benefits like access to our patron exclusive Discord server Club Chennington, check out my Patreon page. I will leave a link in the description below. Until next time. Thank you so much uh, for spending some time with me today, and I cannot wait for our next adventure into the fascinating world of music. We'll talk soon. Much love, your boy, Pad Chennington.